boys and girls, you know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike, from down here at Dynamics Music, and it is Musician Monday. Uh, and specifically today, it is Main Stage Monday. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about my favorite program next to Logic Pro X, that is, which is Main Stage 3. Uh, I utilize this program just as much as I do Logic. Uh, it's probably the second most used program on my computer. The price point on this program is just absolutely amazing for what you're getting. You're only paying $30 for this program, and you're getting all of the sounds that are used in Logic Pro X um, on your computer. I mean, everything from the vintage organ to the classic vintage piano, uh, electric piano, uh, all of the synth stuff. Uh, that just make Logic wonderful program a wonderful program to use. You now have access it, access to it inside of Main Stage, and you can use it in your live performances. Uh, so I think for that, it's just amazing. And then the fact that you can run uh, backing tracks. So that's primarily what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, hopefully briefly here today. I'm not going to try to make this a long, long video, but I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit more into my workflow and what I like to do uh, and how I use it. Um, and hopefully you'll learn something or get some ideas and it'll spark some ideas uh, inside of your set setup that you can do. Uh, don't forget that I do sell templates uh, inside of uh, my web, on, on, not inside, but on my website. I sell templates for Main Stage 3. You can check it out. Look at the link on the screen at uh, dynamicsmusic.net. Uh, and the rest of the, you know, link is on the screen. You can click on it or you can check it in the description below and check out some of the templates uh, that I have for sale. Uh, also, this template is an updated version of the template I showed in my last video, but I have updated it, the file, and so you can still get this uh, template, which is my personal template that I use pretty much every time I use main stage. Um, uh, I, I use this plug, this this particular template that I created, and it's called John Mike's Template. As you can see, Dynamics Music, John Mike's Template. That's what you want to look for, all right? Uh, but I have others on there you can check out. And that's just my plug there, my shameless plug for the day. You probably won't hear me say anything else about it. So let's jump into it and let's talk about this this wonderful plugin that I love to use called Playback, boys and girls. Um, and this is an amazing plugin. It lets you run back in tracks. Uh, and I utilize, got a chance to use this uh, yesterday um, at a service uh, where I play we use the backing tracks and we played um you know played this song and this particular song that i'm going to play a little bit of today is um tamla man's uh, i can only imagine the ver that her version of that song i think mercy me or third day i think it's mercy me though uh, actually wrote that song or or recorded that song initially uh but she did a revamped version of it so what I did was I jumped over here into Logic Pro X, my first favorite program, and I recorded uh, the what we would call stems uh, for that particular song here inside of Logic. Um, I did every you know aspect that I could hear inside of the music. I tried to recreate it uh, as best as I could. Uh, so let me let you hear a little bit of it just to kind of check it out. Here we go. So you kind of get a pic. You gotta get a picture of how it sounds. You, if you've heard the song, um, you know, then you pretty much, you know, know how it's supposed to go and what kind of goes on from there. I, I created the entire song, recreated the entire song, each section as best as I could with the sounds that were available to me. Uh, I did that. So um, let's see here. I had the loop, you know, a loop that I basically threw in. I'm just gonna solo a few of these. Uh, different uh, sounds that kind of show you how they sounded. I had the loop that I threw in. So I threw that loop in there. 
have a kick in here. Let's take this off solo. I uh, also have uh, some snares. These kind of come in on the vamp part, if you've heard the song. Just some extra snares to kind of fatten things up. I have what we call a piano layer. Um, and because I play the piano uh, throughout this song, so what I did was I just really wanted to add just an extra little depth to the um, to the music, some uh, kind of some, um, um, you know, some contrast to it or what have you. I put a piano layer uh, on there, of basically, of basically what I would play. Uh, and I turned it down in the mix so it's not as loud. Uh, and it only goes through a certain part of the song, uh, and it stops, I think, after the, uh, the the bridge. The first, the second verse looks like I stopped it after the second verse, and I just kind of play it on from there. Uh, and then I have a guitar, you know, you know, that I threw in, uh, and the bass, and you know, uh, some other little sounds, and without having to go through everything, uh, I th I created it all inside of Logic. I mixed it. Uh, as best as I could and then uh, I did a quick master using one of the presets here inside of uh, Logic. I used the hype mix preset uh, and I you know did some little tweaking here to some different things to, to the settings uh, and then I did put a you know a limiter on it and did this little um, preset that I did had they have in there called add density. It just kind of helps for the loudness factor. Um, just with you know with mixing everything uh, of course one of the things you want to do when you're mastering this is just like a quick mixing thing um because this is not mastered you know you know commercially this is like me basically adding the loudness factor to everything uh and gluing the mix together i'm not really doing anything you know crazy because i'm using all stock plugins and presets basically and tweaking it to my taste to where it sounds what i like it uh but what you want to do typically um, is without the mix uh, on there, without the master on there. When, it, when if I if I decrease all of these plugins and I play the track, uh, you want to make sure that when you're mixing your tracks, uh, they don't they don't peak uh, the level, the overall level of the uh, song uh, does not peak above uh, somewhere between negative six to negative nine, um, you know, dB. You don't want it to go past that. Uh, that gives you some headroom for when you master a track. Uh, so when I, that's usually what I try to do. And then what you do um, with the master is you gain stage everything back up to zero, you know. Uh, that's, that's just a little tidbit for those of you who are maybe interested in doing some you know, some quick masters on your tracks and stuff, your backing tracks. I like to do it uh, because it just adds some depth and some warmth and some clarity and some loudness uh, to my performance tracks. Uh, like I said, this was nothing that I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this. I think I spent maybe five or ten, five or ten minutes tweaking some things just to make it sound, you know, loud enough for uh, the performance. But the key thing here um, with uh, these, uh, with doing it, doing your backing tracks in, uh, I love to use Logic because they seem to go hand in hand. I have not tried it with any other DAW, so I cannot confirm whether this same method will work if you use like Studio One or Machine or something else like that. But what I did was there's a track here called a marker track, and I added markers uh, to each section and broke everything down into a section, intro, verse, bridge, blase, 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 uh, and I um, exported or bounce out this track, you know, via the bounce menu, bounce and project. Uh, and then I saved it as a CAF file at 16 bit. Uh, Cause I just kind of wanted to get the, 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 the file size down a little bit because I, for some reason, the higher, the, the, the larger, the file size play black, black back seems to have some problems uh, with uh, processing it, you know, and they play back kind of sluggish or you may have some skips or some pops or things like that. That's just some things that I found. Uh, somebody else's 
you know, experience may be totally different, but we'll, uh, you know, that's just how it goes with me. So back here in main stage, what I did was once I did that, uh, I loaded up the file that I uh, created here uh, inside of uh, playback, I opened up playback, and then I hit this little setting thing here and open file. And then it gives me a dialog box. And then I found only imagine, you know, where I had saved it and just hit open and it opens the file here. And then what it does is it imports all of my markers, my verse, my chorus, my bridges, all of that here inside of the playback plugin. So what I did from there was uh, I began to, uh, I can't, you know, because what way I have my template set up is, and let's go into performance mode so we can kind of look at it a little bit larger uh, here. Uh, here I have my patch list with my sounds uh, and I mapped everything uh, from the plugin, from the playback plugin to where it shows up here on the side. Uh, now I have my intro, I can see my seconds, my, my markers. Uh, the, the intro, the verse, the bridge, the, you know, all of that stuff like that. I can see all of that, um, on my, um, particular, you know, thing, uh, my, my sidebar. And then I hit, once I hit my button here on my controller, uh, it plays, it gives me a click in and it starts playing the track, you know, and we start playing along with it. Right here, I have a progress indicator that tells me when the next section of the song is coming in. So now it's going to switch to verse, as you can see. The next marker is coming in in 44 seconds or 40 seconds or what have you. Uh, so it just kind of keeps playing and it'll go through each section, uh, each, each section of the song uh, until I stop it or till we, you know, go. Uh, until we go to the next thing. For practice purposes, I have a marker section where I have it set up to where when I press certain buttons here on my controller, I can uh, move to different parts of the song, like via, via the verse uh, or uh, bridge or uh, the vamp or whatever the case may be, a verse two or whatever. Uh, I have it set up to where I can do that. So uh, that's kind of the way that you can utilize your backing tracks um inside of main stage three uh, it's not anything that's you know overly difficult it just depends on your viewpoint or your perspective on how uh tedious you like to be uh with uh your programming in your plug in your in your um you know with your programming and your playing uh and how detailed you want things to be i personally wanted to be able to you know have it sound when we played on sunday I wanted to have it sound just like it did um, on the album. You know, that was the goal for me. So I tried to emulate the sounds and the feel of the entire song uh, just the way it was on the album. Uh, so, you know, was able to do that. So that's just kind of the way you can set some things up to be able to, um, to be able to do that. Now, uh, other thing I want to kind of throw at you, a couple of things, just some kind of some maintenance things. Uh, when you are working inside of software like this and you're using your computer to play uh, songs, whether it's in, you know, you're, whether you're at a service or you're at a concert, there's some there's a couple of little things uh, that I like to do uh, to ensure that um, I don't have interruptions, unwanted interruptions or things that come in. La, uh, uh, Mavericks, inside Mavericks uh, and I think Mountain Lion, I think that's when they actually introduced this feature. In the notification center, they have a do not disturb uh, button that you can kind of toggle on. I think this is the best feature that they could have added. You know, one of the best features they could have added to the operating system. But you can cut it on and basically it keeps notifications from popping uh, on and off, you know, while you're in a performance. I mean especially if you're in a place where you're connected to Wi-Fi, uh, you don't want to be, you know, in the middle of a concert and you get a uh, Facebook notification, you know, across your screen that distracts you from what you're doing. Uh, Cause I've had those things happen to me. And so I lived and learned. So it's always good to hit over here and turn the do not disturb on uh, other things uh, that you can do as a, as a uh, precaution 
to make sure that you are not uh, disturbed. What I like to do is I hit the audio MIDI settings um, and I have, I'm using a different setup, you know, now for my um, a driver. But what I like to do is because I use the audio interface uh, for my, um, for my performance, uh, I like to put the, make sure the system sound is not set up on my interface. Uh, so you can open up this and make sure that you play all sounds uh, through, you know, all computer sounds, say like a notification or uh, a, an error, you know, sound or whatever. It won't play out through your interface and go out through your, you know, sound system or, you know, that's the last thing you need to do is be in, you know, the middle of a concert and you hit the wrong button and it gives you like that little doop, you know, sound. And it plays throughout the entire front of house, you know. So you don't want that to happen. So I like to set uh, my built-in output as the default. And then inside of main stage, run all of the sound out of my interface to keep from having uh, that type, you know, those type things happen uh, to me. And that's just a few little, you know, tips and things you can do. Uh, it's also good to, if you're in a place where you have Wi-Fi, unless you just need Wi-Fi, uh, for what you're doing is to come up here and just cut the Wi-Fi off to make sure you don't have any incoming connections, anything that would make a sound or, um, you know, any unwanted notification to come in. Make sure you close your browsers out, uh, you know, Safari or whatever browser you use in any other op application. I do typically make it a habit to close out everything uh, but main stage uh, when I'm actually working and doing um, you know, playing on service, you know, playing doing a service or a concert or whatever the case may be. And those are just some different tips. And that's my musician Monday for the day. Hope it wasn't too long. Didn't want to keep you guys too long. Uh, so I hope that, you know, will help you with your workflow as you go uh, throughout anything. If you have any questions, comments, put them in the, uh, the, the, you know, comment section. And I like to, you know, interact with you guys, uh, rate, subscribe and comment and all of that. So we can, you know, kind of get some dialogue going about it is if you have any questions that you want me to answer i love to answer it or any suggestions for a musician monday that you want to uh you want to you have some questions that you have i'll try to do a video on it uh so just you know hit me up uh on all my social things twitter instagram i'm pretty much everywhere you can either look up john mike or you can look up dynamics music and don't forget to check out the template store on dynamicsmusic.net. I have this template and a bunch of others for sale that you can use to just, you know, load it up inside of a software like this main stage and just keep rolling. Uh, and all right, guys, I'm not going to hold you any longer. Um, holla at your boy, and we'll talk to you guys at the next Musician Monday. Peace out.